During the early 1980s, the civil war in El Salvador was increasing in intensity and human suffering. To save their lives, many civilians were forced to abandon their homes with just the clothes they were wearing. Military operations were conducted against guerrilla strongholds, and any peasants living in those lands were considered supporters and subjected to abuses and deaths. <laughs> Entire villages took to the mountains, eating very little and hardly resting, hiding during the day and running at night, always trying to stay one step ahead of the advancing army. Entonces, salimos rumbo la montañona. Mir pasamos por toda la zona dos que le decíamos. Entonces fue una guinda bien desesperable, pues desesperante, que pasamos casi como de nueve días sin comer. Solamente comíamos el puñito de maicillo, sin granito, y para los niños y todo. Ah, de donde conseguíamos una tortillita así para darle un pedacito de salud. In the confusion and panic of the marches, many children were left behind some even sacrificed by their own mothers. Los pobres niños, ustedes, llorando con hambre, en vez hasta con sequilla. Y, bueno, uno deseaba darles, pero como no había nada, muchas, muchas compañeras hasta ahogaron varios niños, porque como tal vez el, el militar ¿verdad? estaba cerquita ¿verdad? y ya había bastante gente, Y porque no muriera bastante gente, pues mejor moría algún niño, va, porque pues, para que no llorara, ¿no? Pues no llorara, porque si ya lloraba este niño, ahí lo, le tiraban bombas. Ahí. Other children saw their mothers killed by the soldiers before being taken back to the military barracks. Mauricio Guardado was only eight years old, and his brother Amilcar six when they lost their mother. Nos quedamos, después se calmó un poco el, el enfrentamiento que hubo. Nosotros pensábamos de que ya, ya se habían ido los soldados, algo así. Pero como al rato volvió otra vez el, el enfrentamiento y fue, fue allí donde nos, nos encontraron y asesinaron a mi madre, a mi hermano y, y la otra personas que, que estaban con nosotros. Amilcar remembers that fearful day when they last saw their mother and were taken to the main Air Force base near San Salvador where they were raised by medics. De repente no sé cómo ni sé por qué que sentía que muchas balas estaban cayendo en el área que yo estaba. Empecé a caminar, digamos, pasé encima de mi mamá y me puse mejor al lado de de mi hermano mayor, Mauricio, y de ahí de repente se Sentí que dejaron de disparar. Ya mi hermano ya estaba lleno de sangre por la porque le, por la sangre que había, le había caído de, de mi mamá, verdad. Mi madre estaba. Mi hermano mayor. Sí, mi hermano mayor. Okay. Este, mi, mi madre ya estaba muerta. Nadie reaccionaba de, la, de las otras dos señoras que estaban ahí al lado de, de mi mamá y y ellos nadie reaccionaba. Todos se veían que no se movían. Y de repente llegaron unos soldados y nos llevaron a una cerca de ahí a una zona algo plana, se puede decir. Ahí había quizás bastantes soldados y de repente fue que me acuerdo que también un soldado como siempre burlándose de uno de, de que ha empezado a orinarse encima de mi cabeza. Some children were taken to hospitals to be treated for malnutrition and wounds received in the war before being placed for adoption in orphanages run by the government. Many given new names and adopted by American and European parents. In some instances, Salvadorian army officers and lawyers benefited from adoption fees paid by the adoptive parents. There were actually groups, uh, groups uh, conformed even by military, who saw that this was a business. And you have the group 
in the report of the U.S. Embassy to the State Department saying that Mayor Alfredo Jimenez, he snatches babies, that's the, the word, snatches babies from the front wall to sell them for business. So let, let's, let's get this, this perfectly clear. In other words, the embassy sent a cable to the State Department reporting actually this? Yes. That's a fact? Yes. Do you want to see it? The declassified document, dated January 1983, was a cable sent by the American Embassy in San Salvador to the State Department in Washington. It contains information about corruption cases of several Salvadorian Army officers. One is the case of Major Jimenez that says, quote, Jimenez is implicated in 1983 Salvadorian court documents as having snatched babies from the conflicted zones to sell them for adoption, unquote. Many children were adopted by parents in the U.S., with legal papers signed by Salvadorian judges and handled through American adoption agencies. Officially, they were considered in a state of material and moral abandonment by the Salvadorian government. The war lasted 12 long years. 70,000 civilians died. The country's infrastructure was destroyed. Peace talks between the government and the guerrillas began. Under the sponsorship of the United Nations, the peace accords of El Salvador were signed in Mexico in January of 1992. The guns had finally fallen silent, giving the Salvadorian people the peace they deserved. With the end of hostilities, many peasants began to question the Salvadorian authorities about their missing children. During the war, these people didn't dare ask the government about the fate of their children for fear of being considered guerrillas and killed. At the end of the conflict, the government rejected or ignored the family's petitions. After the Truth Commission from the United Nations went to the province of Chalatenango, one of the most affected by the war, some mothers presented the cases of their children kidnapped by the army. With the help of their friend, Father John de Cortina, a Jesuit priest who has lived among these people since the war, they formed an organization called Pro Busqueda, that means Pro Search. We thought that it was a very good uh, theme of uh, human rights, for human rights to try to find the children that were abducted by the army. So we began the work in 1993 in on the 22nd of April, we were already visiting the, the court in Chalatenango, plus the Fiscalía General de la República here in San Salvador. They sent us away. We continued the work. And in December 1993, we found the first five boys, uh, children. Encouraged by this initial success, many families began to approach Probusqueda as another alternative in the search for their children. This new hope made them think, if these children are alive, ours could also be alive. And that is why they began coming to us to find the children. And that is the way Probusqueda be, uh, began. Father de Cortina, has been working for the poor since he was a young priest, working with Monsignor Romero. Romero was assassinated in 1980 by death squads directed by the army. Besides providing moral and spiritual guidance to the poor, Father John was a respected professor at the Catholic University in San Salvador. He was in this region back in November 1989, when the army killed six Jesuit priests, their housekeeper and her daughter on the grounds of the university. He was on the list of priests the army had intended to kill.
Through hard work, Probuscada has been able to find children all over El Salvador, Europe, and the U.S. Imelda Lopez Laines was five years old in 1984 when she disappeared from a guerrilla field hospital after the army captured the facility. Twelve years later, she reunited with her parents in El Salvador. She was raised in the U.S. by American parents who were told her family had died in the war. With help from her adoptive parents, the work of Probuscada on behalf of her natural parents, and her search to find the family she always believed to be alive, she found her identity as a Salvadorian. I just had this feeling in my heart that they were still alive somewhere looking for me, and I was looking for them. And the first time I received one of their letters, I was so happy I started crying. And ever since that, I knew it was, it was like a dream that came true. And like, um, I'm just very happy to be here. It's just something I'll never forget. Un gran vacío llenado en corazones que encontraban solos. Para nosotros pues ha sido un placer muy grandísimo. No no tengo palabras tal vez como explicar el sentir de ese reencuentro que fue como un regalo que Dios nos mandó nuevamente a la familia. The long search was finally over for Imelda and her family. She grew up as an American by the name of Gina Marie Craig. Maria Gloria and her brother Jose Prospero were taken by the army during a military operation in November 1982. She was 10 years old and her brother only two. 14 years later, in the company of their adoptive mother, Miss Jean Steinoff, Maria and Jose were reunited with their aunt and brother, Victor Rivera. The Rivera children and their mother had been hiding in a cave. They were found. The soldiers tortured and killed their mother and took the children away. Living in the U.S. as Maria Gloria Steinoff, she had bad memories of the war and her mother's death. Uh, for Gloria, who was very sad for many years, uh, now she knows where people are, she knows what happened to her mother, uh, she knows her brother is okay, she knows where her mother lies now. Uh, I'm very, very, very happy to be here. It is all so exciting. Um, although I remember everything, you know, about the country and how we used to live, um, it's a little different now because I'm used to a, a different life. For Gloria and her brother Jose, many questions about their identity had been answered, and their brother Victor found the only remaining members of his immediate family. Traveling from Italy after 20 years since their capture by soldiers, Carmen, 26, and her brother Hernan, 24, returned to El Salvador to meet their aunts, cousins, and grandparents. Carmen was six and her brother four when they were adopted by Italian parents. 20 years later, they walked to the house of their maternal grandparents in the company of a Probuscada official the media, friends, and neighbors. After a couple of years of communicating by mail, they finally met their grandparents. Visibly nervous and overwhelmed by the warm welcome, Carmen and Hernan have come back to their humble origins. Sono molto contento di di ritrovare le mie origini, di ritrovare 
da, da mia famiglia, i nonni, i, i zii, i nipoti, eccetera. Sono molto contenta di vedere eh, i nonni, eh, soprattutto materni, perché penso che la mamma sia come la mia mamma adottiva, sia la persona più importante, eh, oltre anche al papà. In the presence of Maria and Felice Lombardo, their adoptive parents, the Lombardo youngsters met the blood relatives they never thought they had. One of the biggest problems Pro Buscela faces is the apathy and lack of cooperation from the Salvadorian government. On March 13th of 2002, many families from the organization formed a peaceful march to the National Assembly to petition the lawmakers for the creation of a National Commission of Search to help all those families whose children disappeared during the war. This is the city of Tamarack, Florida. John Robert Bierman lives here. He grew up in South Florida, the son of Carl Bierman. John works as a plumber and has a slight limp on his right leg, the remnant of a war wound. He was almost seven years old when he came to the United States, adopted by Carl Bierman from a Salvadorian orphanage and with the help of a South Florida adoption agency. His family had been killed during the conflict, according to the official story given to his father. He had bad memories from the war, but as he began his life in America, he adapted well in his new country. By the end of his first year in the U.S., he was already speaking English. Sometime later, his father adopted another boy from Honduras, and now John had a younger brother by the name of Andy. He was also surrounded by his father's family. His childhood in America with his aunts, uncles, and grandparents was a happy experience. That's all then. He grew up with all the comforts of an American middle class kid. His father always participated as a coach in Johnny's sports or behind the camera, capturing his childhood and adolescence. As a young man, he learned the trade of a plumber and moved into his own apartment. Years later, he was happy and successful in his profession and content with his life in the U.S. But there were links to his distant, violent past the limping and scar on his right leg, the occasional bad dream. Uh, we had a best thunderstorm come through, but uh, it's like I woke up, but there was a flash and it was it was a big bomb, but it was a thunder, but I was, I was dreaming like the war. One day when John was 27 years old, he got some incredible news. The Human Rights Department at Chicago University had called to inform him that there were people in El Salvador claiming to be his lost family. You know, you remember this? This is your father? Yeah, and, my father uh, and one of my brothers. The organization Pro Buscada had conducted an investigation and learned that John was the only child missing from a large family of 10. And then I was just, I was just, Speechless. I didn't know. I didn't know how to feel. It's just, you know, it's just 20 years. I don't know. After the initial shock, 
he refused to believe his family was alive. It would take a few months of doubts, one DNA test, and a picture he received in his email of a peasant woman who claimed to be his mother to convince John to finally go to El Salvador. I was, I was scared. I want to go see them. Right away, you know, I was like, okay, let's, let's go find out. Finally, John and his girlfriend Jenny are going to El Salvador. He is bringing his parents a color TV and VCR as a present. I always had that in my, in my head, like, if my, my mom and dad are really alive, you know, and not, they're not, they didn't get killed in the war. Back when I was little, I was hoping that they had this, they're alive in El Salvador and had a whole big family. This trip has been in John's mind for a while, and now he's hoping to find many answers from his family. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to El Salvador. Please remain seated and do not open the vehicle until the aircraft has come to a complete stop and the people's time has been turned off. John is at the International Airport of El Salvador, ready to meet his family. Waiting for him is Father John de Cortina and members of Probusqueda. In a way, they're complete strangers, but in a way, they're not. They've been, what I've heard, they've been looking for me since day one, since I've been gone. With Father John driving on the morning of September 12th, 2003, he is finally going to see the family he didn't know existed. In the meantime, his family is getting ready to welcome him to their humble home. His father and mother are decorating in preparation for the arrival of their lost son. Water had to be pumped to cook and give all the kids a bath. Their uncle is coming today. Friends and neighbors help prepare the food for the party. It is a very important day for the whole family. The struggle to find their son is finally coming to an end. He was known to his family as Luis Alonso Ardon, and now he is coming home as John Bierman, speaking only English. The Ardon family has waited many years for this encounter, and in their humble way, they want to celebrate his arrival. John's father wants to look his best, like the rest of the family. This is where my parents live. Yes, this is your town. This is La Reina. And uh, they are waiting for you now. They are expecting you. Okay. And they want to see you, of course. There are a lot of people waiting. Friends, neighbors, and members of the media. The final moment is here. Don't blame us. 
por la guerra, lo está enfermo, <risa> para usted no lo sé, es Porque yo, aunque sea como sea, yo a todos los he perdido. Pero ahora, a la que voy a caer. Me siento mal. Que... Voy a ver, ¿no? Voy a ver, ¿no? Vamos para adentro. It was a special moment for all who witnessed this unfolding human drama. His parents apologized to him for the guilt they had for over 20 years about the circumstances that led to his disappearance. The reality was that Luis Alonso was wounded in a firefight between the army and the guerrillas. As his mother carried his baby brother and his brother Carlos carried him, they ran into an army patrol who forced them, under the threat of death, to leave the wounded child with them. It was the last time they saw him. Luis Alonso was six and his brother Carlos was seven. What has happened today here has been a beautiful thing um, because, well, I saw something which really, the mother asked for forgiveness to John because she thought that she could have taken care of John a little bit better. And when John said, mother, there's nothing to, 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 to be forgiven, she said, now I feel much better, I feel clean. What we have seen, and it's just a testimony to humanity and humanism, and to love, family love. Hijo, I'm happy because I've come. I'm feeling good. 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 I'm Pero nosotros no andábamos, nosotros no andábamos con, con, con ideas que porque queríamos andar en la, en, la, en la guerra. Nosotros lo salimos de los lugares porque si nosotros no lo salíamos de los lugares, los iban a matar en la casa. Pues mire, pues yo hubiera visto qué dolor, qué tormento sufrí. Yo he sufrido, una mujer sufrida, porque ese fue un dolor tremendo, tremendo. A ninguna madre yo se lo deseo, ese dolor. The family is finally together. The prayers of Delfina have been answered. The skinny little boy she last saw, badly wounded, is home now. All those years since John's disappearance, his brother Carlos has always felt guilty about losing his younger brother. The family remembers that sad day when they lost Luis Alonso. He, after I got hurt, shot, wounded, he had to carry me and I was bleeding. And he had to let, let me go. Oh, his dog would be dead. So he must have felt really bad all these years. He's, I'm feeling it. It's hard for him. Delfina's memory is clear about what happened 
When they were detained by the soldiers and forced at gunpoint to leave the wounded child with them. I was wounded bad. Bleeding? Oh, you didn't see? Yeah, grand. No, mira, la perdí a casi la pernita. Y como ya era un poquito más grande y mi mamá no podía con, con, con los tres, yo le tuve que dar la mano para que me quedara abandonado. You did the right thing. You're strong. De allí comencé ya con mi dolor, va. Ve lo dejado. Y yo todo el tiempo, este tiempo atrás que no lo miraba. Sentí un remontimiento entre ellos mismos, va, de lo dejado y mucho tiempo me he culpado yo, verdad. Delfina is proud of her son's arrival and wants the whole town of La Arena to know. This town is a small community nestled in the mountains of northern El Salvador, one of the most beautiful regions in the country. This is one of my best trips I ever had. It's just different air, you know, it's nice. On the second day of his visit, John is beginning to practice his limited Spanish with the children. Hey, yo. Hey. Oh, his father wasn't feeling good the night before. They think it's the shock of seeing his son alive after so many years believing he was dead. Papa's okay? Is that in? Good, good. John brought a gift from America for his family, and he has a video he wants them to see. They are finally together after a long and difficult experience. During the war, his family spent years in refugee camps or hiding in the mountains. Jenny, I'm a natural. Oh, yeah. Today they have plans to show John a good time in the beautiful countryside. Careful. The family and friends are going to have a party for him by the river. The warm reception of his large family is a happy experience for John who always had the desire to find out what happened to his biological family. Now I know the truth and it just, it's just so very sweet, very warm. I feel warm, Yeah, I go to bed and sleep nice, like ah. Uh. The beautiful natural setting fits the happy occasion for this family's reunion. John is happy and in a playful mood.
but his brothers are concerned about his safety. It's been a memorable day for the family. It's time to show his family the video he brought of his experience growing up in America. Ay, yo le doy gracias al Señor de todo esto, porque yo le pedí al Señor que el que había recogido a mi hijo que lo comprendiera y que lo cuidara y que le diera todo su amor como yo lo quería. Today, John has come to say goodbye to his family. He's going back to America. It has been a remarkable experience for everyone. Now John is going home with the fulfillment of having found his biological family alive and with a message of gratitude from his parents to his father Carl for the care and love he gave their son all those years.